Hello and welcome to the Fighting Spirit Podcast. As always, I'm Jason. I'm here for the look back, the retrospective on UFC Fight Night in Singapore, where Damian Maya defeated Ben Askren via rear naked choke. It was a great contest. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to see a lot of the fights. I did wake up a little bit later, so I didn't catch a lot of them. But we'll go over our picks. We'll go over the available numbers and what I've seen. Let's get into it. Here's the show. <laughs> All right, so as far as the main event goes, I said it was uncrunchable, could not be done. Damian Maya, Ben Askren, there just wasn't enough data on Askren. Maya, obviously, more than enough information, but Askren, his funky uh, name also tied to some funky endings up until this contest. So in this one, man, it was it was just a really fun fight to watch for me. The striking was pretty much even down the middle, with Maya having six additional strikes over Askren, 69-63. to 63. And I thought Askren looked really good at times. I thought he was fighting his fight. I thought his striking looked good for the style of fight that he was putting on you know he's scoring takedowns he looked like he was you know doing well with Maya as far as the grappling game goes but Maya man it's not any one of his submissions that is dangerous it's the way he's able to chain them together you know when they were on the ground at one point it went from an uh you know it went from a triangle to an arm bar he had a straight arm at one point he got <laughs> try for an oma plata uh Maya was all over the place in a good way transitioning chaining submissions until he finally took the back of Askren. I thought Askren kind of handed it to him. You know, I, I didn't know what Askren was doing when he did end up taking the back, and then he got the blood choke in and locked it and locked it up real, real nice for Maya. Uh, but where does this leave Askren now? I, I think that's a big question. Obviously, Maya called out Diego Sanchez. He wants to fight another legend. All right, I get that. That's, that's a great fight for Maya. You know, he beat, I think he's 10th ranked, he beat the 11th ranked guy or vice versa. So, you know, he's not looking necessarily to climb the ladder. He's looking to have a fight with a veteran, somebody you probably always wanted to fight. And I think that's a great fight. Maybe he'll get somebody up the chain after that, or maybe he'll get somebody entirely different than his call-up. We'll see how that goes. For Askren, though, his is a bigger question mark. Um, I don't know what he does now you know does he fight somebody else up and coming does he get another decent shot I don't know I think he's gonna fight an up and comer I think the guy's looking at somebody maybe trying to enter rankings now or somebody within the top 15 to 10th place somewhere around where he sits and maybe he makes another you know kind of run up there keeps his name on the map and maybe he gets another great fight but I don't know. He looked good tonight. I I don't think uh, his striking would have been, you know, competent enough against some other guys. Maya, you know, isn't the best striker. But, uh, you know, his takedowns were there. He looked really good on the mat when he had control. And it was just a good fight for Askren. He just unfortunately did not pick up a W. And uh, I did think Askren was going to win. I thought he was a lock, to be perfectly honest. Maya had dealt so poorly with wrestlers in the past. We kind of saw this. He wasn't able to prevent any takedowns. Not that... Maya wouldn't necessarily want to work on the ground, but he wasn't able to prevent any takedowns. I thought Askren was winning the fight overall. It's just things didn't play out as Askren had wanted. Uh, and so, uh, like I said, this one was uncrunchable, though. We did not record any wins or losses on this one. And overall on the night, we went four uh, uh, four and five on the evening. So not really the best numbers or, or four, four, nine in total, but there were some fights that I really wasn't confident about. I said it on the podcast and so I'm not terribly upset. You know, we had the Salikov fight, and we also had the, uh, which one was the other one? The Hafiel Fazev versus Alex Waycard. I was really not confident about those, to be perfectly honest. And we'll, we'll go down here, um, and I'll talk more about them. But uh, that's where we came up on the night. I should have said that earlier, or morning for I stood. Uh, then the next one, Stevie Ray, Michael Johnson. So this one I had called, and I was pretty scared. You know, Stevie Ray, I thought maybe he won the first round. It was tight for sure. They had an excellent grab. Uh, sorry, stri- so tied into the first play. Excellent striking exchange. I thought that Stevie Ray looked just like he was getting the slight better uh, of Johnson. Maybe Johnson was cracking him with more power, but just better. Out of Johns, uh, out of uh, Stevie Ray, and then second round comes, and I thought he was wobbling Ray a bit. Ray had to, you know, kind of grab up, grapple up, and try to, you know, keep Johnson away from another power shot. And then 
third round, I was like, ah, you know, we're getting into the middle here, a uh, minute in. Uh, I, I don't think Stevie Ray is going to be able to pull this off. And he pulls a takedown, slaps on a body triangle, and beats down Michael Johnson. Holds him on the mat for three and a half minutes at least and really takes control and ends up picking up a great win here. He gets a majority decision. I thought it was a good decision. I can see how somebody could have called it even as well. It certainly, uh, that first round definitely was up for grabs and Michael, I think, took the second. So this one was such a decisive third round. I was really happy to make this, this make this call or decision to make the call on uh, just really good contest by Stevie Ray. And you know, what will be next for Stevie Ray? He said earlier that, You know, Johnson's fought a lot of great competition. Guys like Khabib, maybe he's ready to fight somebody good too. We'll see what happens. He's definitely on the way up, and I am liking, uh, you know, his fight against Johnson. Maybe Benil Dariush is in the future. We'll see as we get on to this next fight here. Frank the Crank Camacho gets it wrong for us. We have Benil Dariush defeating Frank the Crank. And so uh, on this one, just full disclosure, I always run multiple metrics at this point, and uh, Dariush was actually winning on a lot of them. Uh, I went with my winningest metric, which did have Frank instead of going with the average like I do sometimes. Uh, ended up getting this one wrong. You know, Frank just didn't like like he was. He, he's been trying to be more patient lately, and he wasn't his overwhelming aggressive self. Dariush stayed very good at distance. And uh, came inside, flurries of shots, scores takedown, and takes his back. Two minutes into the first round, picks up a great win here. Uh, so I, I like Darius. You know, I it was it was a really tough call. I, I like Crank too. I like Frank, and it was just a tough one. Um, he got some performance of night money out of Benil. So hats off to him. And uh, you know, just. Sucks not to uh, get that one correct, because I, I like both guys, to be perfectly honest. But is what it is. I went with the uh, other pick, and, and that's how it plays out. Cyril Gain defeats Dontel Mays. This one was pretty one-sided. Uh, he outstrikes him 3-1, to one, and this man's grappling is just as legit as his striking. I called it. This guy is a freak of nature right now. He's looking very good in this heavyweight division. He's looking like a guy that they put up against somebody like a Greg Hardy. He could really make a name for himself. And kind of get to the front of the line of this heavyweight division. I'm liking this guy right now. Uh, Cyril Gain looks phenomenal. Uh, winning via heel hook, not something we see very often. And, you know, we got to go back to guys like Frank Mir before we can see an accomplished grappling heavyweight like uh, Cyril Gain out there. You know, not that he's necessarily accomplished, but just the way he got it done. Frank Mir, you know, had that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu game for heel hooks and or leg locks. Boom, Cyril Gain picking up, throwing those shades of of Frank Mir down and picking up an astonishing win. I was very happy to make that call. And the next one, Muslim Salikov defeats Loreno Starpoli. So I did not actually see this one. It looks like here in the numbers, Salikov just scored the three takedowns and outstruck Starpoli. I did read that he's a tough SOB, though, uh, Loreno Staropoli, and uh, he maybe, yeah, you know, could have won if he had stuffed takedowns and, and maybe put on a little more striking, uh, but ultimately he was defeated, and we got that one incorrect. And one that was, I was uh, also pretty shocked, uh, Ronda Marcos defeats Ashley Yoder. So we got this one incorrect. Uh, Yoder lost via split decision, so it definitely was close, but she was just outstruck nearly 2-1 to one despite having the takedowns, and maybe it was a bad call. I don't know. I didn't see it, uh, but uh, he, he did get it incorrect, and I'm a little surprised. I really thought Yoder was going to pull through on that one. Just kind of is what it is. And another one that kind of is what it is is Rafael Fazev defeats Alex White. I was concerned about this one. I did not think that Alex White necessarily could win. It's just that Fazev had been knocked down his first UFC outing, so we didn't see much of him. We didn't have a lot of numbers, whereas Alex White had been in the UFC longer, even though we didn't have a great record. We had more information on him. And so he crunched out better. It's just the way it goes sometimes. And I didn't have the confidence about it. Uh, maybe sometimes I should you know, maybe pull back some of my calls when I, I'm not confident. And that would be something I'd do in the future. Because I, I really didn't, you know, I, I really didn't think this, that Fazev honestly was going to lose this one, even though I didn't have the numbers to back it up. And, you know, I try to always go by the numbers. But sometimes there's just not enough statistical information to make good calls. And I always try to let you guys know that. So if you ever sense some doubt in my voice, definitely is there. I am pretty uh, open about that. So anyways, Fizet picks up a win here. It's a good solid win. He, uh, you know, gets back on his winning ways and I look forward to seeing that guy fight again in the future. 
in one I was able to call correctly. Mosfar Avalov defeats Enrique Barzola. So Barzola is one tough mother. He went in, outstruck Avalov, but Avalov with those four takedowns over the three rounds was able to cement a victory. And uh, Mosfar looked really, really good. Uh, I'd like to see him fight again for sure, uh, but Barzola, man, you cannot underestimate that guy's toughness. He stood there. He even outstruck Ivalov. He just could not, uh, you know, pick up a W here. He couldn't stuff the takedowns or get some. Well, he got one on his own, but he couldn't maintain that position. And then another heavyweight that just looks really good. It was derailed by Alex, by Overeem. Uh, Sergey Pavlovich, we did get this one correct as well. He defeats Maurice Green in the first round. Scores a great knockout on Maurice Green, and that's all she wrote for that contest. Then we had Loma Lukabume, which just is a phenomenal Thai name. Defeat Alexandra Albu. I was a little surprised in this one. Uh, people calling her kind of a wannabe Instagram model getting into MMA. And uh, that's kind of how she looks. She was outstruck pretty handily. She uh, scored one takedown herself, but Lukabume scored her own. And uh, I had Lukabume just was the better fighter, even though she only won via split. It seemed like it probably... Should have been a little more unanimous, but uh, is what it is. And then in the last one, we were not able to call correctly. Rafael Pesosa defeats Jeff Hughes. Jeff Hughes is tough. He hung with him. He nearly threw as many strikes, but just did not have the edge. And Rafael picks up the win. And Rafael is another one. You know, he only saw an outing with him against Cyril Gain, and Cyril Gain knocked him out. So information available, not so great for Pessoa. And that's the case with all these international cards. That's one of the reasons I'm a little hesitant. You've got a lot of, you know, not uh, a lot of, um, who is it? Uh, you know, a lot of just green guys or guys that just don't have a lot of available information, just not a lot of statistical analysis available sometimes. Um, for some fights, you know, like Steve Ray and Michael Johnson, I thought there was a load of information. Even though I got it wrong, Neil Darius, Frank Crank, fair amount. Uh, and then uh, probably most far Enrique Barzola wasn't bad, and, and but that was that was kind of it. You know things really drop off after that. Cyril Gain, Dante, not really much. Um, Muslim Stalikov, Lorena Starpoli, yeah, some data there. You know Stalikov, I think was having his second or third fight in the UFC today. So you know it's it's really hard to you know make these calls when you only have uh, you know a handful of information. But anyways, just kind of on a sidetrack. So yeah, I went, uh, went forward five on the night. Not great, but uh, international and due to the confidence I had with some of the picks, I'm not, I'm not really too upset about that scorecard. You stayed away of this, you know, fight. Uh, maybe you picked up Cyril Gain, who I thought was the lock of the night. I think he did okay. Uh, and we'll be back next week because that's the one I'm really feeling. I'm coming back into it, baby. I think we're going to have some great numbers under this one. Uh, UFC 244 is looking phenomenal. Statistically, we got a lot of guys with good information out there. Your Darren Tillers, your Gas alums. Um, you know, we got Kevin Lee on this card. I mean, this is going to be amazing. Let's just kind of run through this thing. Uh, I mean, there's this is just, I mean, it's ridiculous. So obviously we've got the BMF belt, Masvidal Diaz, Gastelum Till, uh, Stephen Thompson, Vicente Luque. That's crunchable as hell. That's going to be an awesome fight. Got Derek Lewis on this one fighting Bogoy Ivanov. Not something I'm too disappointed about. Kevin Lee, Gregor Gillespie. Whew, that's a tough fight for Kevin Lee. I love Kevin Lee. I hope he's, you know, ready over at TriStar to take on a guy like Gillespie, but he's looking amazing right now. Kevin Lee can't beat him. He ain't ever getting Khabib. I'll say that right now. Corey Anderson, and Johnny Walker. Walker's on a freaking tear. Hopefully his shoulder is fine from his dancing move. You know, he did not the last outing, but he's looking phenomenal right now. Corey Anderson's also no joke. I don't know if he's going to be able to put him down so quickly like some other guys. Uh, let's got Brad Tavares. Edmund Shabazian's looking really good. Shane Burgos. Mark on Armakani. Awesome fight. Andre Olovsky. I mean, I'm not too crazy about that, but he's taken uh, on Jazeera Rosenstruck. Watch out for Rosenstruck in that one. That guy's looking really good. I think he'll put away the old man Arlovsky in that one. Uh, we got to crunch it, obviously. Uh, Caitlin Shkagi and Jennifer Maya. Solid fight. Nothing uh, too much uh, to complain about that. Lyman, good chance. Ren counter. And then Julio Arsh, Hakeem Dawadu. Ooh. That one, uh, I like Dawadu in that one, I think, but uh, that's also a phenomenal fight. Ours is no freaking joke. This thing is stacked. This is like one of the best cards um, that I've oh, nearly ever seen. I mean, this thing is looking 
amazing, and uh, you're not going to be disappointed by the calls in that one. I think I think they're all crunchable. I don't think there's a single fight there that I can actually skip uh, due to lack of information. That's going to be uh, just a lot of good calls. So I'm looking forward to it. I already crunched one of the fights. I crunched Masvidal and Diaz. And, oh, do I want to give a little taste of that one? You know, I think I think that I could. Uh, let's see. Who is winning on the latest metric? Well, actually, I'm doing a little bit of a crunch right now to try to optimize. But, uh, you know, I'll give a little taste. A little taste. If you're, it's deep into the podcast. Give a little taste. I got. Now, get close to your, your speaker there. I got George Masvidal. Jorge. Scarface. I got Street Jesus taking that one. And that's going to be good. I think that's just going to be a mother. Now, could Diaz win this fight? Absolutely. This is for the BMF. They're both bad mother efforts. But, got Masvidal. That's the pick. All right. We'll go through the rest of them. I'm going to look forward to that, that co main too. Oh, man. It's just so good. I'm just excited. I'm just feeling it. I'm loving it. And until I speak with you again, which will only be in a few days because we are less. No, we are exactly one week away from the BMF title going up for grabs. I'll talk to you soon. And until then, happy fight, Biggin'.